Greetings and welcome to another video in the Voice Tracking News series. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at variables, well, at least the basics of variables. Now, variables are like digital storage boxes where you can place information that you use in your commands. Until you create them, they don't exist in voice attack. And if you try and use them, they'll show as not set. Once you add a value to a variable, voice attack will remember what it is while it's running. However, if you close voice attack or it crashes, any unsaved values will be lost. Fortunately, though, we can save them to the profile. And we'll look at that in a minute. Now, there are five different variables you can use. Have a look. We go to other, advanced, and then we can see we've got a text value, a boolean, which is true or false, integer, which is a whole number, a decimal, which is a number with decimal points, and you can go up to 10 decimal points. We can also set a date and time, and we can also convert a value. Now, the one there, small integer, is a legacy variable that's from a long while ago, and it's just purely in there in case an old profile is using it. We'll look at the different variables and how you use them in more detail in another video. For this one, we're just looking, as I say, at the basics. We mentioned about saving the values to the profile. If we go into the text one as an example, we've got two options there. One is retrieve a saved value, and one there is save a value. And it says there, check this if you want the value that is set to be saved with the profile for later use, even if voice attack is closed. And then retrieve is select this option to get the value from this variable that has been previously saved to the profile. So all you do is with them, um, let's call it um, var one. And then we do save. And then whenever we set anything in here, like that value will be saved to that variable. If we then want to retrieve it, we want to make sure that is ticked and this is unticked. And then that way, when this command is run, it will retrieve the variable. When you save a variable to the profile, you need to tell voice attack to recover it when you run it again. Note, you'll need to close voice attack for them to be saved in the first place. And if it crashes, you'll lose any data. You can either have a command that runs when you load the profile to retrieve any saved variables, or you could do it in each command, but I would recommend doing it on the profile load. By default, variables are global in nature, which means that once set, you can use them across any profile you have, which can be useful if you have included profiles. But you can also restrict their usage with a prefix. Now there's four prefixes you can use, which affects how voice tax treats the variables. So if we create a text variable quickly, and we call it var1, so the first prefix is the greater than symbol. So we need to put it at the beginning of the variable, which makes the variable a profile scoped one. So it's only usable in the current profile. And this lets you have the same name used in two or more profiles, but contain different values. However, when you change profiles, the values will be lost. If you want to retain the value when swapping profiles, you need to prefix it with a second greater than symbol. And that way it will save it even if you swap the different profiles. Now we also have the command scoped prefix. And this is the tilde, which makes this variable temporary while this particular command is running. It can be handy if you're doing a loop and you wanted to count how many times the loop cycles through. It's a throwaway variable. If you need to pass a command scope variable to a subcommand, you can prefix it with a second tilde, which means this variable will be shared among commands executed in the same chain. The values are passed from one command to any subcommands and then back up to the main command when they're complete. If you want updated values to be passed back up to the calling command when you execute another command, you must make sure that the wait until this command completes before continuing option is ticked, which it should be by default. And that's the basics of variables, and we'll look at doing more with them in future episodes. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, what do you think, put them in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the like button, and if you haven't already, 
hit the subscribe too and share the video out until the next one take care and i'll see you soon toodles <laughs>